You're not mincing words here, uh, calling Jason Kenney a coward. Is it? Is he shutting it down to shut down debate, or is it prudent in the in the when Alberta is getting crushed by the third wave? Why should MLAs be going to the legislature? Well, I, I guess, the, I mean, there's a couple of key points here. The first thing I would say is, interestingly, uh, UCP MLAs did actually travel across Alberta uh, in order to show up uh, in uh, in the legislature building today. They showed up for committee meetings and other things. They just didn't show up for question period or in the legislature itself. So so that puts even more questioning to uh, the, the rationale that Jason Kenney provided yesterday. But more to the point, here's the thing. Uh, under the leadership of this premier, we have servers still weaving their way around full tables of maskless people who are eating on, on patios. We have uh, retail workers uh, trying to elbow their way through crowds in malls. We have teachers uh, going into classrooms of 49-year-olds, um, uh, you know, trying to, many of whom are not masked. Right. So if those folks can show up for work, then I find it very difficult uh, to accept that suddenly Jason right. Kenney is at great risk. And if this is a premier who is really concerned about setting a good example for Albertans, then I would suggest he start by uh, disciplining those multiple members of his caucus who are actively undermining the, the merits of the public health uh, rules which are in place right now. Okay, by the way, how did things get so bad there? We're hearing it's the worst per capita in not only our country, but in, the, in North America. Yeah, no, it, it it is true, and 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 you know, I look at those numbers and I look at the maps that show that Alberta is is, is the worst, and I I kind of wonder too, what's going on here? But but really, it, you know, I think it comes down to the fact that for for 13 or 14 months, this premier himself has actively undermined public health measures. He's actively undermined the rules that are in place. He's claimed that they they run against our economic interests. He's claimed that they restrict freedom. He's claimed that that uh, that um, uh, you know we're only dealing with the flu. He's allowed his caucus to undermine them. Uh, he's not enforcing but, but the he's rules. Then done, but we've got does, two thousand people at a rodeo. But he's now slapped down some restrictions. Pardon but me? Not, he's now slapped down restrictions, and I know he's got more restrictions. Finally, uh, I know his own caucus. Many of them don't like them. The seventeen of them that are but but what else needs to happen? If you, in your view, like do they need a more robust restrictions? Well, it, let's two things. First of all, I will say that the restrictions that he put in place, uh, first of all, he lifted restrictions prematurely in February. That was the first thing that he did. Secondly, the restrictions he put in place three and a half months ago or weeks ago were half measures. Thirdly, the, the so-called restrictions he put in place uh, late last week are non-events. That was a performative event. If you dig into it, uh, with the exception of the fitness uh, studios who've been uh, ground down by this government over the course of the last uh, 12 months, there was nothing new in there. Uh, so he hasn't really done that. It, it has been performative. He also excluded the writings of, uh, effectively, of most of his uh, MLAs from being a, uh, a subject to those restrictions. So, so that's the first thing. But the other thing is that he says, oh, well, none of these restrictions will ever work because no one follows them. And if the concern is that no one is following them, then that's where he needs to take some responsibility. Again, because of the, the way in which he's been communicating to Albertans about these restrictions from day one, and then the fact that he's not enforcing where people are, are actively flouting them, like, as I say, for example, uh, 2,000 people showing up right. at a rodeo uh, this weekend and not a single penalty assessed uh, to this point. Yeah, I, I just, again, we all saw the footage of the anti-lockdown rodeo from this weekend in uh, Bowden, Alberta. It caught national attention, people without masks congregating. As you say, there was not a single penalty there. Um, just real quick, you were going to propose an emergency debate at the legislature if it was open. It's now closed. What would you have proposed? Well, we would have wanted to talk about a number of things. So, for instance, today we, we proposed four uh, uh, elements to enhancing enforcement uh, in, in the province in order to get the message out to folks that even though the Premier's been uh, vacillating on these health restrictions, that in fact they're real. We would have proposed bringing in a right. sick leave uh, program because we know that's critical to helping folks stay out of the workplace uh, when they are uh, feeling uh, you know ill or whether they've been exposed. So 
those. So those were a couple of things, uh, and, and there were a number of other issues that we would have been addressing with respect to supporting uh, kids who've been sent home recently, as well as uh, providing more support to our frontline healthcare workers. Well, again, I really appreciate you joining us. Again, we did ask a representative of the Kenny government, and no one was made available, but uh, Rachel Notley, leader of the official opposition, former premier, thank you so much. Stay safe in Alberta.